won 27 national championships? Something. Yeah, whatever. Uh, it, it's called a dynasty. And so, uh, so Jack's here to uh, just give us a little talk about um, about rugby, about the experience of it, I suppose about getting to that next level, becoming elite, and um, all of it to take to become a champion. Yeah. As long as I'm here, you don't have to work your ass off. <laughs> oh, it's coming this afternoon. Let your, uh, let your food digest, huh? Um, so maybe just say a couple words and then uh, take some questions. So you got to think about a question that you might, uh, you might have. You guys come in? Come on? Yeah, come on in, guys. Rally around here. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Appreciate it. There's always some dude in the back, you know, I'm ready to share. <laughs> I'm used to it. So, uh, I, so the theme is, is next level? Yeah, I'm the next level. Next level. Um, next level. So, that, that, that to me means human performance. That's my, uh, I got a couple of things that. I may, um, I'm a bit of a, I guess, an expert. I'm hard to call yourself something, I suppose. But I, I, I basically, you know, you know, fuck off about a lot of stuff. Not zero. And, and I actually know quite a bit about a handful of things. And, uh, and one of them is human performance. So um, if uh, you were my neighbor and we were just shooting the breeze about your objectives around sport and what you want to get done. I think that we'd end up talking about human performance at some point. I'd ask you how you're sleeping. Are you sleeping well? The science around sleeping is overwhelming at this point. Um, it's, it's not about anything other than making, uh, having the discipline to do everything we can to sleep well. Um, I hate when science uh, does this to me, but you know, if I'm coaching one team as an expert in my sport, and there's an identical team we're competing against, and they don't even have a coach, but they sleep eight hours in a cool, dark, clean, safe place, they're probably going to outperform us. All the science says they'll beat our ass. Um, their mental agility will just be better. Their recall will be better. Their, their ability to mentally play will be better. They'll, 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 they'll have more energy, but it won't necessarily just be that. It'll be really how acute their, their focus is uh, and their determination. So I would encourage you to sleep. I would think sport is study. I think that, um, I, I'm sure this sport is played recreationally, where it's just about, you know, breaking a sweat and having fun. And, and I think recreation is, is good. I mean, I have recreation in my life, I imagine. Um, even though you might be chasing this sport on a high level, that doesn't mean that you don't have room for recreation the rest of your life. But I mean, there's, there's just a fundamental difference from somebody. I mean, if it's really about next level, I mean, if it's truly about that, then it's sport is study. And, and that means that, it, well, in any endeavor that you're studying, I mean, that, that pursuit is different than something you're just participating in. Does that make sense? So you would. I mean, you, you would have an insatiable appetite for information. Um, you, you would want to, you'd want to grab as much um, evidence uh, as you could about the sport, video, mutational. You'd want to grab everything you could get to say, you know, who, who, who can I model after, who can I aspire to be? <coughs> I imagine you'd find a way to capture every bit of that information. 
there wouldn't be a period of time when you allow information just to kind of run by you. You'd grab it all, you'd have it, it'd be sticky to you, you'd put it somewhere where you could look at it, and it could inform your pursuit of the next level. It's no different than anything else, right? I mean, right? You guys use a lot of film with your teaching? Right? Um, video analysis is, is where all of our statistics and notational analysis come off of. We don't, we don't do much in real time other than to help us at half time. So any type of real information that we're grabbing uh, is, is vis a vis video analysis. So <clears throat> I think it's um, materially important. And I would, I would just, you know, I would grab nutrition and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. As you can see, I'm not, like, I, don't, I probably shouldn't be talking about nutrition. But, uh, you know, you get to personalize some of this stuff. You know, you get to decide which, which of the stuff's important to you. My favorite coach I work with at Cal is a guy named Mike Tatey. He's the rowing coach at Cal. He's from Philadelphia, you know, and he acts like he's from Philadelphia. He talks like he's from Philadelphia. Whatever you would think somebody from Philadelphia should act like. That's exactly how he acts, you know. And I tell him about nutritional science, how important I think it is. And uh, he says to me, it's bullshit. He said, the best guy in my boat that rode us to gold medals, he ate a bungo burger every day and drank like a fish on the weekends. And it's got nothing to do with nothing. You know, I disagree, right? Because, but I get to, he gets to personalize, you know, some of this stuff. You get to decide what stuff's important to you. And he's, he's decided that's not important to him. Sports psych. Like, he uses sports psych. I don't. Like, my team didn't know they had sports anxiety until that dude showed up talking to him about managing sports anxiety, right? So, um, you know, you get, to, you get to decide in the sport and study thing. Um, but uh, listen, just get curious about it. If you're serious about next level, if those words came out of your mouth, not just out of the mouth of the organizers of this event, but out of your mouth. If you're looking in a mirror and you're saying, I want to know how far I can go, I, I want to know if I can get from here to where I want to be in this sport. I mean, if you're, if you're saying that, then it's going to be sport stuff. You're, you're going to have to decide about all of, all of that stuff. Um, um, and what else? Okay. Yeah. So when Steve and I play yeah. in USA, yeah, 20 something years ago. Right. Right? Roughly? I mean, we didn't do a lot of fun. We didn't have to sort of sight. We, we, no one told us what we should do. And that it seems like anywhere you go, it's an issue. And it's, it's a topic. And, it, and I wonder, like you say, one guy says it's BS and another guy says, no, it's, it's for real. Um, please tell us, is it for real? I think it is. But no, no, of course it is. I mean, listen, there's a baseline, right? I mean, Video analysis is just that. I mean, it's, 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 it's a capture of what just happened. It's evidence-based. I mean, if, you, if you're looking to have a story, well, then you don't need the video. If you're looking to have evidence, you need the video. And you need the real statistics to come off it. Now, once you get deeper into the field of sports science, then you, you get to customize it. But there's no customizing video analysis and rotational analysis. It is what, it is what happened. Um, I mean, the second bucket I just want to briefly talk about um, is, I mean, I've coached national teams for a pretty long time in my life, and um, in the theme of next level, um, I developed an acronym at one point, and so I talked to players at one point in the national team, uh, and the acronym was Identify, Commit, and Develop, ICD. So, you know, you got to identify people that have a chance, right? This is about people that are truly ascending, you know, people that they're getting better because they're coachable, because, you know, it's, it's, it, maybe it's a mix of their athleticism and their skill base and how quickly they're learning, right? But people that are ascending, you have to identify them. And, and you have to weed them from people that aren't ascending in the sport, that are just participants. You know, they're not going to be elite players. And again, I mean, shit, there's room for everybody, right? It's just, but at some point, if, if the theme is next level, let's 
let's be authentic to that. Um, and then commit. And then, I mean, and I don't know what commit means to you, um, how you use that word in your lives, but it's probably like you've got to go home to the people you love and say, I'm going to chase this thing. You're probably going to have to tell the people in your life that, um, that things are going to change a little bit. But I'm, I'm going to have to do things that I haven't done in the past in order to chase this thing for a while. That journey, whether you make it or not, is exactly a very rich thing. Uh, you know, and obviously what are you going to do? You're going you're to make yourself do a lot of stuff that you've never done before, right? You're going to make yourself do things. That's part of that commitment. You're not going to allow yourself to do things you really want to do, right? That's all part of that same discipline, right? It, it's, it's, uh, I mean, there's nothing that fun about it, to tell you the truth. It's just some kind of weird endeavor that people do, whether they're, whether they're trying to get to the top of mountains or whether they're trying to get on national teams or whether they're, you know, trying to be internationals or, or whatever their goal is, right? I mean, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't come easy. Right? It comes with, um, you know, a lot of sacrifice. And I imagine there'll be a curriculum. You know, I imagine there's a curriculum for you to follow. Like, cool for you, right? You're showing up at this thing. That's an example, right? But I guess that all the people that are going to make it ultimately, whatever make it needs, um, they're going to do all of this plus, right? They're going to, they're going to do something else. I mean, I don't think if, if, like on my team at the university, there's a lot of guys that want to play in the Olympic Games. They, they want to be on the national team. Uh, this time of year, we're in a cycle where we're only training three days a week. The volume isn't very high. We get, our volume goes up considerably in the second semester. So in this semester, I mean, there's literally 40 guys doing something on a day when we're not training. It's like, what the hell? You know, we're not training today for, on purpose. Why are there 40 guys out here chasing something? It's because they're not going to fall behind. And because they're competing with each other, believe it or not, even though they're, they're kind of brothers in what they're doing. Um, I mean, it's just an example, man. It's an example of you got to do stuff that other people aren't doing. This has to be proprietary to you. You know, you've got to follow the curriculum and the advice and the, and, and, the, and the procedure, if you will, all the protocols of what the people that have been there and done it are saying, right? You can't think you've got a better idea. I mean, you really do have to follow it. But then at the same time, you've got to do more. You know, you got to find a way to do more. And that won't let you down. I mean, you know, you, you, maybe you fall short of some ultimate goal, but you'll get to the next level and beyond that and beyond that. But it takes that kind of commitment, and the third word is development, and that's the development. So identify, commit, develop is, is how is the process for getting from where you are to where you want to be in, in sports. The, the third bucket that I just want to touch on real quickly, um, and then maybe we can, if you have any questions, I can address them, is so. Like personally, you know, the shiny goblets in the showcase, like that's not my deal. I have to admit, I'm pretty competitive. I, I want to be at the top of the medal stand. I can't imagine not winning or trying to win. I mean, it's, it's like it is in you. It's in my DNA to, to kind of want to achieve. Uh, but that's not enough. Man. That, that doesn't get me out of bed um, to, to want to go to work, right? So for me, it's around team. That's my thing. My whole thing is around teeth. And I work at this big world-class research institution, maybe the finest public school in the world, they say. And team isn't taught anywhere on our campus, nowhere. And that makes me almost laugh. You know? I mean, I, it's like, are you, are, you, are you shitting me, right? Nowhere is team taught. I mean, is there, are there some students working together, like on a, on a project, yes, you know, for a short period of time, that ain't a team, you know. Are the ROTC guys talking to you? Yeah, probably, but no, not the same. And uh, so I think one of the things you get out of this is very personal 
And you know, you can chase this excellence, you can chase this next level, but the thing I hope you're, I hope you're getting is the, is the aspect of team. To me, it's everything, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not of the belief that we're like one smart, smart dude away from solving anything. Not disease, not the environment, not poverty, not education. I mean, nothing really significant are we going to solve with like one bright person. It's going to be groups of people, shoulder to shoulder, noses pointing in the same direction, getting shit done together, right? So, uh, I happen to think that what I'm doing personally in team is valuable because of that. And I think what's happening here is valuable because of that. Like, if, if what we can do here makes communities a little bit better because, you know, we're more collaborative, uh, if it makes families a little bit tighter, if it, if it makes uh, workplaces better uh, because you're showing up with skill sets that other people just don't have. They just, they haven't been on a team. They don't know what, what a good team looks like and feels like and tastes like. They don't, they don't know what a bad team is. They don't know what a great teammate is. They don't know what a bad teammate is. They, they, they really know fuck all about team. So to have an experience where you actually know a lot about team because you're in a laboratory and you're working on it, I mean, you're part of the solution to that. You're part of what we need, man. We need people that can work with other people on stuff that's hard. Or, you know, make, make plans, have a strategy, have a set of tactics, make, make some adjustments, um, and then compete for a goal. So, I mean, just in recap, right? I mean, I mean, everything that I do anchors in that. The mindset of my team, when you could ask the first guy that got here yesterday versus the guy that's been here the longest on my team says, well, what's our mindset? And it's, it's grateful for everything, entitled to nothing. That's how we roll. So, I mean, if that works for you, you know, you're, you're welcome to it, right? Because there's not enough. There's not enough gratitude in this world, and I know damn well there's too much entitlement, and there's something about people that don't think they're owed anything and just kind of get on with it. They become the most resilient people, and uh, so that team, that whole team thing is critical to what I'm thinking about. I gave you a little human performance, and we talked about ICT. You know, I, did, I didn't buy the afternoon, so I'm done there. And I'm happy to kind of answer any questions you might have. Questions, anybody? Okay, I have one. How did you go from football to rugby? Um, I know how I did. I had my own friend and football was available at home. How, how did you do that and why? Well, I mean, in both, in both our sports, right, um, we have to make a lot of decisions with the ball in our hands. Do we, you know, do we pass and so do we? And uh, for example, and uh, so I liked all that. I, my favorite sport growing up was basketball. I played football for an athletic scholarship. Um, probably didn't have the money in my family to go to university without a scholarship. So I played football. They got me a scholarship, and uh, I loved it. But somebody taps you on the shoulder at Cal, you know, because we've been playing rugby since 1882. Somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, it's rugby season, man, what do you think? And I went to my first practice, and it was like basketball, you know? People were passing the ball, moving it around, and trying to move the defense around, create some space, and attack the space, and said, I know, I know what we're doing here, instantly. I fell in love with the sport right away, and I never looked back. I have a question. You uh, spent a lot of time talking about team, the importance of team. So, what have you done um, that comes to mind uh, to help build a team? What are some things that we can do with our teams or right. do with your team? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm involved with team. Uh, you know, I guess lecture in organizational behaviors at the university. I, uh, I'm, I'm involved with uh, coach education around. I'm involved with corporations talking about culture and team. So my life is full of it. But what we can do together is we can decide what we believe in. We can decide values, right? I mean, 
ultimately what good teams have is they have beliefs. They decide what they are, and then they fight for them. And that's the one thing that separates teams from just collections of people. Like on my team, like I, I won't go through them all, right? But like we believe in selflessness. We say team first, self last. Not because it's a, you know like a sign on the gym wall, but because that's what we believe in. That's how we make decisions, what's best for the team. And if somebody isn't selfless enough to kind of come along with that, then they're in the wrong place, you know? I mean, you know, if you can't say we and us pretty easy, you're not, you're, you're going to be found out in our group. If you're an I and a me guy, you know, it's not going to work, right? So, um, Why do you see that? So selflessness, uh, we believe in uh, constant performance improvement. We be believe in getting better. Like we're not staring too much at results. I know I talked about winning and, you know, I'd like to win as much as the next guy. But, like we're talking about getting better. We're trying to find ways to measure getting better. Um, we believe in merit. Um, like I'm a big believer in like, what are you getting done? That's that's your currency. Like, if you want, if we were a team, and we're training, and you want your voice to resonate in training, it's because you're doing something. It's not because you have potential, because that's good to have. But, um, you can't dine out with potential very long. If you've got a lot of experience, that's good, but it's meant to be monetized. It's meant to be great performance in the moment. So the voices that resonate are the voices that are getting shit done. So we believe in merit, and there's a cool thing about meritocracies, you know, it's not about the color of your skin, or, you know, who you pray to or don't, or who your daddy is, or none of that shit. It's about what are you getting done, you know? And, and then we believe in toughness, which, you know, you guys know plenty about. You know, mental toughness, you know, and, and that's a big, you know, we say it's the ability to focus on the next most important thing. Like there's a glossary in our organization, in our team, for everything that we use. No one's saying things like mentally tough, and nine guys are thinking nine different things. We're all thinking the same thing on this list. We have a glossary for every word like that. And, you know, that's what you need. I mean, you know, what happens when things, who, who's got access to mental toughness when things are going really well? Well, no one. <laughs> it's when things are pear-shaped and they're all fucked up, and we gotta say, okay, well, you know, how do we focus on the next most important thing? How do we get out of this? You know, what is the next most important thing? And that's a real discipline. And it's, it's what mentally tough people can do. And then we believe in leadership, and we, we say leadership very different than other people. Um, you know, we believe it's a skill, it's an ability. Um, the ability to make those around you better and more productive. That's what we say leadership is. Leadership isn't the coach. Leadership isn't the captain. Leadership isn't the star player. You know, leadership, a lot of times, I mean, it's, it's awkward if the coach and the star player and the most experienced people can't provide any leadership. That's, that's, that's going to be awkward. But um, they should be competent leaders. But, you know, we want to open up leadership to the whole organization. We want to make sure everybody can contribute to the middle. And on our team, it's a requirement. Like, if you're not willing to contribute some leadership to the middle, and that doesn't mean you always have a better idea, right? It just means that you're, you're, you're trying to make those around you better and more productive. Say something, do something. Get out in front when it's hard to be in front. Push others in front when it's easy to be in front. You know, tell you, someone. You, you promote that philosophy 100%. Every day. To every all day. your players. Every day. Talk about it, say it, write it. Um, fence post it, right? I mean, apparently, I never built a fence myself. Apparently, you dig a hole and you walk, you dig another hole and you dig another hole. You know, so you say it every day, and you find a way to measure it. When we see a video, and we see somebody doing something selfless, or somebody doing something mentally tough, we celebrate the hell out of it. Make it a big deal. In training, in competitions, wherever it is. I mean, we're, we're, into, we're into all those things. And, and here's the important thing, is that we process all of our human transactions, all of our, our team transactions through those. So we're always making value-based decisions based on that. You know, it's just not, it's not a wrap. I mean, it's like we're living that stuff. That's what teams do. And you can see where, you know, you're in that you're in that thing for a while. You'd be different. You're different. You're different when you leave that thing and you you know you're you're more valuable. I, I don't know how you hire people out of Cal. Why would you hire those people? It's all cognitive stuff, right? But that ain't gonna do anything. I'm not I mean, 
you know, you know what non-cognitive stuff is. You know, you know, you know the grit that it takes every day to freaking get up and get going. Right? That's the stuff, man. I'm trying to bottle that stuff. Anybody else? Questions? sleepwalking through that though. And I think that's your point, right? Yeah. I think it's possible. So, I mean, I see people all the time that have been on teams for seven, eight years. So they should be approaching some level of, of master, right? They should be approaching this thing, but yet they haven't really been paying attention. You know, they haven't been super curious to hold it. So if you're not, if you're not like, not into this. That's that's why I started with sport and study. I mean, if you're not if you're not going to cross that threshold to say, yeah, I got a journal. I, I'm, I'm I'm paying attention. I'm referring back to what I learned. No, and, um, I mean, if you're not really fully engaged in sport and study, then there's a chance that years are going by, and you're at the participant level, and you're not going to get to be 10 years, and now I'm an expert. Right? You're an expert if you're given everything full measure. Right? I think that's what they're talking about. I, I, I know too many people that are at that threshold and they're anything but an expert. So what, is, what, what, what might that also mean though? Right? It might also mean that if you're bloody paying attention and you're way into it, that in four or five years you may be there. Right? It might mean that. You know, it, I mean, it's a, it's a benchmark, nothing more. That's a There's no professional rugby right, in the United States, or there is. And when you're competing for athletes in terms of football, basketball, baseball, where they know what those guys are making, how do you get guys to buy in that rugby's their sport? Well, I don't know that you do, right? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that you do. I mean, I think that there, there is some percentile of people. I mean, if you can make NFL money. Forget about it. Right. the risk. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about generational wealth. We're talking about taking care of your kids' kids, right? That's what we're talking about. Right? Um, you're probably going to do it. You're probably going to do that. And that's the same in all of our professional sports. But I mean, th those people are almost outliers. I mean, there's just so many extraordinary athletes. Um, extraordinary athletes that with work in a given sport can be really good at. And, and they're gonna, you know, they're on a different path. They're not gonna be, you know, I mean, we have guys, that, our, our players go to Europe and they play professionally in Europe. Or um, maybe they get a contract with the USOC. Uh, you know, it's professional, but it's not, it's not gonna be generational wealth, right? It's, you know, like we have a star player right now playing for the Cardiff Blues in Wales. And he's a star, I don't know, he makes, a couple few hundred thousand dollars per quid, right? So that's maybe it's 400 grand. A lot of money, but it's not like NFL money, not NBA money. I mean, a bad shortstop in Major League Baseball is making like five million. He bats 220 and won't sign an autograph. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy what we've done in professional sports. So those guys are gonna do what they're gonna do, but there, there's still plenty of Plenty of really good athletes out there in the field team. I think, that, I think there can be a richness through sacrifice and through trying to, you know, do something that's almost unattainable. And, um, and I think we've been able to package that and kind of um, ingrain it in the culture of the program. So we feel like we're playing for something bigger than ourselves is the answer to the question. And, and I think that that matters to some people. I think it matters to um, even a generation that gets slagged off all the time, you know, as millennials or whatever. And I did, that's not my, I don't, I don't believe that. 
I believe that everyone's kind of looking for to be a part of something bigger than themselves. So I think that plays. And, and there's a tradition component to that as well, you know. Like we, we feel like we're playing for the people that you know, went before us. And, uh, you know, we feel like, if, you know, it'd be bad to let ourselves down. It'd really be unthinkable to let a bunch of other people down. Right? Pride. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pride, it's responsibility, it's, um, it's all of that. And then, and then there's just this notion of full effort. I get to see a lot of athletic events. I get to see a lot of athletes compete. Um, I see a lot of people finishing contests, and I know they didn't get full effort. That's okay. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to be the, the judge and jury for pe how people participate in sports. But I know in my in my sport, it's different. Than, it's not court, right? So the players, it's 70 meters across the field, and so I don't get real close to them. Half time, I can look him in the eye. But like after the game, like sometimes if, if we won a huge game, like we have to play with like BYU, and they're really good, right? They're, they got everybody on the team's a foreigner. They're all from rugby playing nations. They're older, right? They're, they've gone through these Mormon missions and stuff, so they're like 27, and all. We're, we're playing with college kids. And, you know, they're more mature. They're, you know, it's a hard game to win. We win that game, and there's a bit of jumping around and around because everyone's happy. But when I get close to the players, like, I look them in their face, right? I mean, it's, it's heavy. Right? Their faces are like sh shallow. Right? They have dark circles under their eyes. Um, like, it'd be a nice night. They shiver right away, right? They get cold. And uh, they cry easy. You know, not because they think it's cool to cry. It's not good to cry for them. But they don't have any defenses at that point. No defenses. They've given everything they have. And now they're just, they're, they're there. They're naked almost, right? That kind of effort gets you a lot of things, you know? And it's, it's seldom. It's, 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 you seldom see it. What you see is talent. There's a lot of talent. Talent will be effort a lot of times, but not every time. I'd like to have both, but I'll take effort every time, mixed with some tradition. You said two things: play for something bigger than yourself and give full measure. I think that's that's the secret to us. Anybody else? Hey, good luck, man. <laughs>